Richard White, Senior BIM Consultant for Man and Machine, and today we're going to look at one of the new features within Revit 2022, which is the tapered walls function. So as you can see here in this project, we have a wall that's placed in a section view. So we're going to look at the ways in which we can taper a wall, both the external face and the internal face, um, for different wall types. Um, to allow for a variable section within that wall to be used as this taper. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the um, creating a new wall type um, to act as this functional uh, tapered wall. First thing we're going to do is we're going to edit this and, du and duplicate the wall type and rename it. We're going to call this our tapered wall. And we're going to have a variable air layer in here. So we just want to make sure that we're labeling this correctly so that we can find it again in the future. I'm then going to go into the structure of the wall. And within here, where we've got our 50 mil air layer, we're going to select the tick against the variable, um, variable layer here. This will allow us to then to change the function of the wall from a vertical wall to a tapered wall. Once we're happy we, that we've done that, we will notice that we get some additional information in here around some of the cross-sectional properties of a variable layer. We'll come back to that in a second. Over in this side, as part of the, while this wall is uh, selected, the uh, properties over here, you will see that we have this cross-section pra uh, cross parameter. This parameter will allow us to change the function of that wall from a ver standard vertical wall to either a slanted wall, um, a feature that came out in Revit 2021, um, or a tapered wall, and this is allowing us to change the variable nature of one of those elements within the wall type. We're going to move this to a tapered wall and then go back to our edit type. Now that we've got the edit type function within here, we can start to change the angle in which that the variable layer of this wall is going to, uh, is going to change. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look at changing maybe the exterior angle of this wall. And what you should note at this point is it also um, shows you which element of this wall is fixed. So in this particular instance, the narrowest point or the, 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 the minimum value that we set within the, the structure of the wall will be at the top of the wall. So we're going to set this to two and a half degrees and set apply. And what we can now see is the external face of this wall is now tapered and the, um, the top of the um, air gap is still remaining as 50 and the bottom of the air gap is now extending so we now have a tapered wall which might be quite useful for things like piers and buttresses. Likewise we can do the same with the interior angle as well so this will then extend it further so we may want to change this to a three degree um, pitch and this is now going to extend this even further on both sides of the wall. So this gives us some nice bits of control. Something to bear in mind is if you are changing which function you're working at here uh, with regard to uh, which, which, um, which part of the wall is the control part, whether it's the top or the base, um, if, you, uh, if you set this to the base and your angles are um, too tight, you may end up uh, getting an error message on screen which will then result in it not creating the wall correctly or asking you to delete it. So we'll just try that and see what the error message will come up as. As we're getting here, we're saying we cannot create this wall because the layers will um, degenerate or, or they're interacting with one another. So we're ending up with a cross, uh, a cross section where th these walls are actually crossing one another, uh, where that space is getting too small from the top to bottom. If we're working from the base, the likelihood is we, want, we may want to flare the wall in the other direction, in which case we would need to use a, a, a minus angle to make that to work. So from the bottom, we may want to change this to um, a minus 2.5 2 and a minus 3 um, from the bottom, and we can flip this around the other way, as you can see there. So it gives you a little bit more uh, flexibility of control of the ways in which you want to um, manage your walls and have them spreading uh, or, or flaring in one direction or other in a vertical space. Hope that's been helpful. Thanks very much.